The, isn't one of the scary things with the GMO foods is that there's still so much unknown since it's a relatively new science or practice, I guess? Well, I know some of the research uh, did mention that. We don't really, we're almost playing Russian roulette with our own bodies. Because mm -hmm. see, I think this is the key out of all of it. Genetically engineered seeds cannot replicate themselves. That's the key. If they could replicate themselves, Lord knows what's going to happen. I believe there's an old um, there's a, a story called the hundredth monkey, and, and a, a monkey there's a hundred monkeys on an island, and one monkey start ate the banana and peeled the banana. There'll be a point in our society, all of a sudden, this genetically engineered food is going to catch up with us, and there's going to be like a generation. We're going to have all these abnormal birth defects, and what's going to happen? They're going to tra they'll never in their minds initially, and I won't trace it, trace it back to the food, but going to just a genetically modified wheat. The wheat today has a lot of gluten in it. Mm -hmm. Gluten is the protein that's found in wheat. That gluten has two things it can cause or challenge with. Gluten will plug the villi in the intestines. The little villi are shaped like this. So your, your intestines cannot absorb minerals, for example, iron. That gluten, also being a protein, can cause a reaction in the body and someone could have loose stools. So let's talk about celiac disease for a minute, mm -hmm. tracing it back to genetically engineered. The only official way to diagnose celiac disease is to have a biopsy. And when they look at that biopsy, the skin or the epithelia of the intestines is denuded from villi. That means it's gone. Mm -hmm. And I read research that it could be eight or nine years and that villi will still stay away. It doesn't necessarily grow back. 41% of the people in the United States today have the genes for celiac disease, but only 1% of the people actually have the condition itself. I know that a part of that whole issue has to do with genetically engineered wheat that's, or gluten that's in wheat, rye, oats, and barley. But here's something to ponder. Measles, mumps, and rubella shot. Hmm. Mumps, parotid gland. Digestion starts in the mouth. MMRs. I'm just throwing this out quite interesting. If your parotid gland is not secreting the enzymes to break down wheat and starches, is it impacting the rest of the body? I don't know. Amalgams in the mouth paralyze the parotid gland. Is it an issue? Possibly. I'm going to tell you a story. All my stories are true, by the way. I had a young man that came into my practice. He was not a young man. He was my age. He came into the office. He had chronic anemia. Now listen to this. This is so significant. Chronic anemia been to the world's famous clinics, nobody could figure out what's going on. And he happened to go to first grade with me. So years later he came in and I looked at him and I said, let's just do a diet sheet. And so his ferritin, which is a source of iron, was low and a few other things were low. So he brought the diet sheet in and who comes with him? Of course his wife, lovingly. I looked at the diet sheet and I just started circling. Now I'm not saying these foods are bad because I have to really, I have to be a diplomat when I do this. I said these foods could be an issue and was like whole wheat bread. And his wife just piped up. And I, she said, in a loving way, it's all whole wheat, Dr. Bob. It is really good for you. And I didn't say anything. By the time I got done, it looked like I had a map of the world. <laughs> and so I said to him, I said, I think I found your problem. He said, what do you mean you found my problem? It's wheat. I said, what's happening to you is, is that that wheat has gluten, and your body does not have the ability to absorb iron. That's your problem. Now, physiologically, a red blood cell will live on the planet for 120 days. So I said to him, this is what we're going to do. So I supplement with a digestive enzyme, a whole food iron, and a liquid iron. I'm going to throw this out to the world. One of the best liquid irons is something called yellow dock. Yellow dock is an herb that has iron in it. It's good for skin, good for liver, good for iron. So we put them on this program. 120 days later, CBC with a differential, and guess what? He was normal. He was normal. He did not have celiac disease. Hmm. So I'm trying to make this point here. Mm -hmm. His lumen, don't, do you ever wonder where they come up with these names? His lumen in his intestines, the villi started to work again. He stopped eating the wheat. Now this same patient, he's been a patient for a long time. They don't always listen to me, you know. He was addicted to what I finally call the torpedo of death. 
The Torpedo of Death is a chocolate-covered cream-filled eclair, <laughs> which used to give him headaches. The reason I talk about the Torpedo of Death, it kills the liver because it affects the liver and the gallbladder. So that is just one incidence.